Hello and welcome to the Fave English podcast, your one-stop shop for Venezuelan football in English, bringing you fortnightly episodes dedicated to the Venezuelan league, the national teams and the myriad of Venezuelan players around the world. Today I'm co-hosting alongside my counterpart Kevin Vivas of Unse Fave and I'm very excited for today's guest, 21-year-old striker Samson Akanula, born in Benin and raised in Nigeria and signed from Slovakian side Seneca now terrifying Liga Football defenses for Caracas FC. Samson, welcome. Yeah, you're welcome. How are you doing? I'm good. So, I found your childhood, your background, just from looking at the the data, quite interesting. Um, born in Benin and, and raised in Nigeria. Uh, what can you tell us uh, about your childhood? Yeah, my childhood was a little bit um, difficult, but from I was born in Benin. But I was I was raised up in Nigeria. I go to school in Nigeria. Do everything in Nigeria. I play. I start football in Nigeria. And when did you first start playing football? Oh, uh, I started football with um, Texas Lion, Texas Lion FC of Lagos, in Lagos, yeah, the academy. Mm-hmm. And did you play? Did you play football from a young age that as was a kid? Yeah, yeah, I played from a young age. I think um, thousand and I start thousand and. Um, 11. 2011. So when you were like 11 years old, you started playing. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. And I, I saw that you, you first left Nigeria uh, just before your 19th birthday when you joined uh, Dunashka under 19s in Slovakia and then later that year joining Seneca. Was that your first time outside of Nigeria or your first time outside of Africa? No, no, no. I've been to many countries. I've been to many countries for trials, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've been to Belgium, Westland, Bethlehem for trials. I've been to African country, Egypt, to France. And, and Samson, for example, well, knowing that you were born in Benin and you were raised in, in Nigeria, uh, during your childhood, you you had of the Nigerian players start like Obafemi Martins, I don't know if Nuanco Canu or Cocha. What what national team did you support when you were a child? Nigeria or Benin? I, I don't know if that can be polemic for you, but if, if you can yeah. say. Yeah, when I was childhood, I support um, Nigeria because of Jeju Kocha, Kanu, Wanko, you know, Obafemi yeah. Martins. So yeah. yeah, yeah, I support them always. And were your were your parents uh, from Benin or, or your parents Nigerian? No, my my mom is from Benin. My dad is from Nigeria. Ah, okay. And and um, when when I was searching uh, about you, you know, in the answer for the questionnaire, and I, I I saw that you play with the under seventeen or under twenty of Benin, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, under twenty of Benin. Yeah. And you were one of the top scorer of, of the championship. How um, have had you like a relationship with the national team of, of Benin? Can they call you in the in the next months or, or years? Yeah, I think I think I have relationship with them, but I think in maybe in years or months they can call me. It depends on my hard work and you know my performance. Well, yes, maybe in Benin, uh, it's it's sounding about about your performance because you have played the, the most important competition in South America. Maybe you can get a, a, your first spot in the, in the national team. Yeah, yeah, I think I think so, but I think maybe it depends on the coach, you know. Yeah, and your, yes, your exactly. first your first game for Caracas FC was in the Copa Libertadores. And, and then you scored in, in the second round against Junior from Colombia. And so far, this tournament, uh, probably this will remain the case, but you're the only player born outside of South or Central America to score in, in this year's tournament. So it's good. Yeah, it's a, very, it's a very impressive record. And when you signed for Caracas, it, it got a lot of attention in, in Venezuelan football. Venezuelan football fans are always excited about foreign players coming to the league, but are more used to players coming from other South American countries or, or Central American countries like, like Panama. Obviously, yeah. Kwaku Osibonsu was already at Caracas FC. 
and, and Adele Guns came along with you. How did that move transpire? How, how did Caracas FC become aware of your, your situation and decide to sign you? It's because uh, I've, been, I've been linked. When I'm, I'm in Senator, I've been linked with Caracas because Caracas have been watching me. So then Sp Philip, Philip, Philip speak with my agents that he wants me to come to Caracas. But my agents speak to me and I said, let me check. Then I went to, to Gogu, I checked Caracas. I said they are the biggest team in Venezuela. They are the champion. They are, they are Caracas is a very big team, yeah. So I think, and they give a young, a young boy, a young, uh, young boy a chance. So that's why I came to Caracas to play. And what have been your opinion or, or your thoughts about the talent in Venezuelan football in, in these first months? Yeah, I think my opinion is um, Venezuelan football is there are a lot of talents in Venezuelan football. And it's hard, like it's physical, you know. You have to be fit a lot. And I have seen that one of the best teammates you had had, like, like best performance that you, you can be in very well is with Richard Sellis. Do you like to play with him? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's a good friend of mine, you know, because he has played in Senator before. But we've not played oh, to, we've not we've not played together in Senator. This is the first time we're playing together. Wow. So I think I think it's a good combination. Yes, yes. I, I didn't remember that. And also uh, I knew I know that you will up playing with Ade Ogons, isn't it? And yeah. do you think that uh, that you and Ogons are here in Caracas? Uh, it's like Uh, a good point for you. You, you, all of you, you both feel more comfortable here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We feel more comfortable because we've been since we we've, we've been in Caracas here. Yeah, we've we've been more comfortable. We relax. It's like we feel at home, you know. Yeah. We've, we've Now, I remember watching. Like, I remember watching your interview with uh, Elias, Elias Lopez of El yeah, Mundo yeah. Balón when you first arrived to Caracas. And it was very interesting for me to hear, uh, you said that you didn't really know anything about Venezuela before you arrived. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> how's it been? What are your, what are your opinions? What, are you, what have your experiences of Venezuela been like so far? Obviously it's difficult because of the pandemic, but what have you got to see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think my experience in Venezuela is, because I don't go out a lot, you know? So I've not been, because it's pandemic, so I don't go out a lot. Maybe sometimes beach, sometimes I'm at home. So, but I think it's good. Venezuela is good because this is the first time I've come to Venezuela. I see there are a lot of people, the surroundings everywhere is good, yeah. And how is your Spanish uh, coming yeah. along? Are you, are you learning? Yeah, yeah, I'm improving little, little, little by little, I'm improving, yeah. Because the first words that they taught you were bad words. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's like that. It's like that in Africa. If you want to hear English, you have to start from the bad words, you know. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's like that. Samson, uh, I think that all the Caracas FC players or the former players say is that they always learn something about Cheetah, about Noel San Vicente. What What would you say you have learned uh, with him? I've learned a lot. With him because he's a like he's a defensive coach and he's a good he's a good coach because he's he's jovial with everybody you know he's a, he's a good coach I've learned so many things from him. And when you first arrived at Caracas FC, um, yeah. were there any players that particularly helped you settle in? Like, were there any translators, for example, like players that were speaking English so they could help you understand the coaches in Spanish? Yeah, yeah. there are a lot of players that, that speak English in Caracas, like Julio, Kaki, Diego, mm. they speak English, so they inter they translate. When speak, uh, Shita, sometimes um, Mario, sometimes they translate to English when Shita speak. And Samsung, How how is your routine here in Caracas? What would you do? You you wake up early and you go to the trainings and and then what happened with Samsung in Caracas? <laughs> yeah, actually I'm not a I'm not. It's because of pandemic, you know. So when I go to training, I come back. I was 
I was at home, always, always at home, watching football, you know, improving in some areas because I have to learn more. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so I have to learn more. So I watch people playing, so I learn Do because you, I don't go you, out. When you say you're watching football, are you watching other Venezuelan teams or are you watching like the European leagues or the other South American leagues? No, I will, I'm watching European league, then I'm watching Venezuela league also. And have you seen uh, the commentators of, of Liga Football are calling you El Buffalo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you like the nickname? Yeah, it's like that. Everywhere, everywhere in Senita, they call me the bull, you know? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, everywhere I go to, they have, they have a nickname they give to me. Yeah, yeah. It's, well, it's because you're, you're, you're short but really powerful. You're, yeah. You're deep for it. And yeah, I, yeah. That really showed with your... Your goal against Atletico Venezuela last weekend when Ajin Livingston was was chasing you and you cut back and he yeah. fell to the ground and then you, you chipped the goalkeeper. It was, it was a very good goal. Did you talk with Ajin Livingston after that goal? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> because I did not talk to him because it was a little bit disappointment, you know? Like, yeah. it's yeah. like, wow. Is it when, when, because I sent the video to him, me and Bonsu will send the video to him, so you have to watch the video again. It was like me, <laughs> you know, it's very, it's very hard, you know. That's I told him that's football, football is like that, yes, exactly. Well, you, you have seen that many people, many journalists, many fans have talked very well about you, and and I guess yeah, yeah, and I have seen that your family or friends there in or whatever, uh, they are bright about you. Uh, what have the people that you know uh, in, in Benin, Nigeria, or Slovakia have told you about your performance here in Venezuela? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've told me a lot because they'll be telling me I'm doing a good job that I should continue like that, that I should only learn, you know? Yes. Yeah, they, they said I should only learn, I should keep working hard. And, and do you have like a goal because Venezuela can be a, a good a good step uh, to show yourself in, in Venezuelan football. And then do you have like a dream or a goal to arrive in a powerful team here in South America? Yeah, everything is, uh, everything depends on goals, you know. God knows my next move, but I'm dreaming to go back to Europe, you know, in the biggest team in Europe. Yes, it's true. And your, your football idol is, is Kylian Mbappe, is that correct? <laughs> yeah, 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 Kylian Mbappe. Yeah. Although you're, you're very different players like in, in your style. So, so, they are a bit similar. Yeah. <laughs> Both are, are fast and, and yeah. powerful, but Akinjole is more like a, a forest striker. So, Caracas have, <laughs> Caracas have made a very good start to the season. Um, top of the top of the group after the first round. As a group, what are, what are the ambitions yeah. of Caracas FC this season? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As a group, we're, we're after the champion. You know, after the season, we have we 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 after the champion because we have to lift the trophy. We have to we have to be the champion of Venezuela League once again. And you very you very quickly become the the starting striker. Um, like every game, do you expect to settle this quickly? Do you think that you would be the starting striker straight away? No, no, I don't expect that. But I think my performance, my performance in training, give me the starting lineup. You know, because in training I've been working hard, so my performance in training give me the starting lineup. Yeah, and you had because. To yeah, every time I went to, I have to, I work hard in training so I can be at the starting eleven. you know? Mm -hmm. And you had the, you had a long um, period of training with the late start in Venezuela, not starting till mid-April. Um, obviously, you had the, the whole of February and the whole of March and just March, a few yeah. games in Copa Libertadores to, to really get your, get to know your teammate. And it, it feels like um, Cheetah has a very set starting eleven almost that they're, not much rotation there. Do you do you prepare uh, for each opponent in a different way, or do you are you approaching every game with the same style, with the same ideas that you want to 
get across on the pitch? Yeah, yeah. For me, I approach the same with the same mentality. Every game, I take it as if I'm playing a final, you know, because I I approach every game as I'm playing a final, a Champions League final. So every game, I try to do my best. Every game, I bring in different style with mentality because as I as a striker, every match I have to improve a lot. Every match I have to play it as if I'm playing a Champions League final. It's a great uh, attitude to have. I, re I remember I heard in your interview with Elias and and you told that you talked with with Bonsu before coming. What did Bonsu told you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought I thought uh -huh. to Bonsu before coming because me and Bonsu were in Senator before before come, Bonsu came to Caracas. So I speak to him, Bonsu how is everything in Caracas? Is Caracas good? He said Caracas is okay. Yeah, everything is fine. That is good. That if I come, everything will be okay. That they take him as a like they like a family feels at home in Caracas. That everybody in Caracas is they are good person, you know. And I told him, hope you know, if I come to Caracas, everything is good. And what of the environment, the coach, everybody, the play. He told me everybody is, is everybody is good. That's why I came. Well, let's dress you the Venezuela's national team, Samsung. <laughs> <laughs> Who has been the toughest uh, opponent you've had to play against on the pitch? Like the, the hardest defender for you to, to beat so far in Venezuela? In Venezuela, the hardest defender. No, 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 no. I think um, Monagas, I think Monagas defender. Because I don't know his name. The, was it the was it Paroso, Grandi Paroso? Yeah, yeah, he's Peroso. A, a former national team defender. He uh, has lots of experience. He played in the, the Copa America semi final in 2011. Uh, he's a very yeah. good defender. Yeah, he's a, he's a very good defender. And who's who's the hardest defender to play against in training? In training, the hardest defender, I think, Kati. Kati is the hardest Kati. defender. What makes, wow. him, what makes him so difficult to play against? Because he has power also, you know. He has power, then he has sense. So we have to, we fight a lot in training because he don't want me to score. <laughs> so we fight a lot. He's, he's, he's not the tallest defender. He's quite short, but he has a lot of game intelligence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He has a, a lot of intelligence, yeah. Yes, that's true. And, and what would you say... Um, For, for example, now Leonardo Flores is playing with the national team, and and for example, Echeria, there are like many leaders in Caracas FC. The captain oh, yeah. is Echeria. The second captain is Leo Flores, but Kaki Rivero can also be the third captain. There are many leaders there in the team, or there is like a one uh, which is outstanding from the others. No, no, there are many leaders. Diego Osio, there are many leaders. Castillo, uh, Exxon. Yeah, 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 there are many leaders in the team. Okay. And we hear during games a lot this season, I've noticed that Cheetah is he's very, very vocal because obviously there's no fans um, this season. Attendances in Venezuela have been low recently in general because of the, the economy and, and other factors. But you can really hear everything that San Vicente is saying. And he talks a lot, particularly to Castillo and, and Flores in the midfield to organize them. Um, what, what are the instructions that he gives out the most during the game? What kind of things is he, is he telling you to do? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he has been, in training also, he told me so many things like, in training, I have to come to the ball. I have to find, to go to the space, you know? I have to, I don't have to wait because if I wait to defend that defender, we collect the ball easily. But if I run to space, it's my advantage. So it tell me so many things uh, like first, I have to run to the first post. I have to run to first post or I should make like three moves in the box, you know? Yeah. Because I'm, I'm a striker. I can't, I can't wait for a full chance. I have to find a little, I have to, a little chance and convert it to go. Is, are, are there are there many similarities similarities uh, between, for example, the, the logistic or, or the way to prepare things of Seneca from Caracas Football Club? Like, is the same owner, isn't it? And there there are similarities. Yeah, I think it's it's different. 
you know. Okay. It's different, bro. In Senita, in Senita, is is little bit um, easier, you know. But in Venezuela, you know, you have to be, you have everything about fitness. You have to be physical. But in Caracas, it's easy. In striker, you just have to stay up front. But in Venezuela, like in Caracas, striker, you have to mark. You have to come back and mark, and you attack. You know, because Cheta is like a defensive coach. You know. So you have yes. to defense attack, defense attack, you know. And we have to compact, but in Senita it's easy, it's really easy because you just have to stay. And in those different. in your first in your first few games for Caracas, firstly against uh, Cesar Vallejo in Peru and then and Junior in Colombia, was the quality of the opposition uh, a lot better than what you were used to in Slovakia, or is it a similar level? Mm, I think it's similar level, yeah. It's similar level, yeah. So what would you say the, the biggest differences in the football played in, in Slovakia to Venezuela? Obviously, you've said in Venezuela it's a lot more physical, but in, yeah. in terms of in terms of play style, what would you say are the biggest differences and, and maybe if there are some similarities as well? In terms of playing style? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are similarities as well, too. Because you know every coach has his own pattern and every team has his own pattern. So it's different. In Senator coach, his pattern is different because in Senator we use um 35-2. In Caracas, sometimes we use 442, sometimes we use 433. So it's it's similar, different, you know. And what about the miss- tempo of the games? Is is the football in Venezuela faster or, or slower than Slovakia, do you think? I think the two, the two is faster because Venezuela to football is faster. Yeah, it's fast. Uh, would they, would your former teammates in Senica, um, anyone in Slovakia, I don't know, Brazilians, they, they have asked you about your, your, your current situation in Venezuela? They are curiosities about, about this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a friend in Senica. I have a lot of friends in Slovakia, so they know everything about me in Venezuela. They know I've been trying, I've been, I've been improving a lot, you know. And, and so we talk every time. And why would you suggest to other players to come Venezuela or to come Caracas Football Club? Yeah, I think for me, uh, if I want to suggest a player like. It's because Caracas is a big team in Venezuela and they create a lot of chance. They give chance to a young guy, you know, to prove, to improve. Yes. Yeah, a lot of, because a lot of young guys in Caracas, there are many, a lot of young guys with talents. So Caracas is a good team for young guys to improve. And how have you found the, the basic um, parts of life away from football since being in Venezuela? So, for example, like, you know, get getting to training, getting home afterwards. Like, how do you take the journey when you need to do your food shopping? Like, do you go out yourself and get it? Do you go in a group? Like, what in terms of like everyday life? How have you found things? Yeah, I think um, most times I call, I write to some of my teammates. You know, if I want to go anywhere, I write to them because they have cars, so they take me to everywhere I want. So it's it's a little bit easier. For me. And you, you're living with a few other players? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do that with some players because if I want to go to training, I call, I write some players, uh, come and take me today. He said, yes, okay, I'm coming. So it's easy. And what- well, you are between a big wave that African players have, have come to Venezuela. Well, I think starting from Adjim, but Caracas have, have brought three, including you. Do you think that really the African player need these opportunities to come to South America, which is something not, not common. Yeah, it's not common. It's really not common. And it's hard for Africa to come to South America, you know, because every every African I Europe, everybody wants to go to Europe, Europe. So it's hard. Few of African players can come to South America. Maybe... One like Caracas, big biggest team in Venezuela, just like that. Well, uh, when Jordan interviewed Adil Livingston like one year ago, 
Uh, Adjin even suggested that the scouts in Venezuela or, or, or South America, they should extend their network and catch all the African players that which are very good. And, yeah, yeah. and they just focus in, in the African player playing in Europe, but they don't see about the African player playing in Africa even. Yeah, it's because, you know, in Africa, if agents, any agent that want to, that want to take you good player, they only take good player to Europe, not South America. So it's yes. hard to take you to South America. Only Europe, everybody wants to go to Europe, you know. But if I think if agent from South America can extend their tour to Africa, the, there are a lot of talent in Africa that will play in South America, good. Did you see Benin with opportunities to qualify to the World Cup? Yeah, I think uh, there are a lot of I think they can qualify. We could have uh, a World Cup in 2022 with Benin and Venezuela. <laughs> <laughs> um, Akinjola with la vino tinto. <laughs> so, um, Samson, thank you very much for, for agreeing to this interview and joining us to chat about your start to your career in Venezuela. Um, I just want to wish you the best of luck for the rest of the season. I think you've made a very, very good start um, to the time of Caracas, uh, and it's particularly in May. You're, you're starting to score now in the league and your partnership with Richard Sellis is really impressive. So I just want to wish you the best of luck for the rest of the season and thank you very much for joining us. Uh, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate it.